How do I tell my fiancé that our relationship is based on a lie? In high school I currently, 25 male, had a crush on a guy named Jax. Not having the confidence to approach him in person I decided to write him a note confessing my feelings with a poem. Yes I was that guy in school. As well as asking him to meet me under the football bleachers if he returned my feelings. The plan was to put the letter in his locker. But I ended up being too nervous and had my friend Beth do it instead. The thing was she ended up putting it in the wrong locker having put it in the one next to his. As if that wasn't bad enough our school assigned locker based on first names rather the last name so the locker she put it in also belonged to a guy named Jax. I didn't realize the mistake until the other Jax show up under the bleachers. I wanted to reveal the mix-up. But before I could the other Jax started telling me how beautiful it was and how much he loved it talking about how he couldn't believe someone felt like that about him. After that I didn't have the heart to tell him the truth. We ended up making a date because I was too nice to tell him the letter wasn't for him. When I revealed to my friend what happened, she convinced me to go on the date and once it was over tell him I didn't think it was going to work. It would likely still hurt him but not as much as him knowing the truth. This Jax wasn't necessary my type at the time. I had a thing for the jock type and Jax was more the theater nerd type. But as it turned out our date went great. Me and this other Jax had a lot in common. We made plans for second date then a third and after that we officially started dating. Once Jax and I got together I swore a Beth to secrecy and made her promise to never reveal the truth about the note. Jax had a lot insecurities issue at the time and I was terrified of how he reacted if he knew. Jax and I have been together 8 years and we currently planning our wedding. We got engaged 4 years ago but due to the world closing down had to postpone our wedding. Beth who became good friend with Jax over the year think that before we get married I should tell Jax the truth about the note. As she know how hard it is to live with the secret. But I know this will hurt him. Jax he loves what he think is our how we met story and will tell anyone who will listen about it how I put a love note in his locker and how it was so romantic. He even still has the note. But I'm scared about how he will react it if he finds out the truth. Your relationship isn't based on a lie. Your first date was based on a mix-up. After that, it's all real. I think it's okay to tell him and okay not to. But you need to tell Beth to mind her business and not try to cause drama. It's really weird for her to be so invested. If you tell him, don't be dramatic about it. Don't make it out to be a big life-changing confession. Be prepared for him to need a bit of time to process the information just because he'll be surprised by it and his brain might need to replay those events. He might feel embarrassed or his teenage self-esteem issues might pop back up temporarily. Just remind him how much you loved him then and still love who he became and that you're so glad things turned out the way they did. Beth is gonna fuck this up for you. Dude, that story is adorable. Why hide it? The universe decided we should be together, so Beth put my note in your locker instead of this other guy's locker. And the universe was right. There is no need to tell him if you don't want to. But that story is just so lovely and cute. I personally wouldn't be able to resist. Why do you need to tell him? I don't think that it would be so terrible if he knew, he might even laugh. But all the same, why don't you let him keep this idea? Is it necessary to tell him? It's not like you've got some secret child out there that you're trying to hide from him. How many straight to Netflix movies is this the plot of? Beth sucks and isn't your friend. I even doubt her being Jax's friend. No one has anything to gain with this admission other than her and the fact that she's willing to try to ruin your relationship over her displaced guilt is insane. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why would your conscience bother you about such a trivial confusion? People form relationships through the strangest coincidences and mishaps. The origin is unimportant, what matters is the relationship that develops. As long as nobody else was ever hurt by your getting together, then there's no reason to hang on to this guilt. So you went to high school with two guys named Jax and both were gay? Yeah okay. Update. Found my close friend, 31F, on Bumble a month before her wedding. Update to this post from yesterday. Quick too long did not read. Found out my close friend who's getting married next month has a dating profile up on Bumble. She said it must have been from when she was single, but the pictures are all very recent. After some back and forth about whether I should leave it alone, I decided to bring it up with her again today at happy hour. Plan was to frame it as, I know that's not an old profile from the pictures, just wanted to make sure you're okay. Turns out I didn't have to, she came clean about it before I even had the chance to broach the subject. She's had some really serious political, lifestyle arguments with her fiancé in the last month, 
and while she still cares for him, isn't sure she can see herself wanting to have children with someone whose values are so radically different from hers. He and I have never talked politics much but I knew he was pretty far to the left while she's a social liberal, fiscal conservative, but apparently he's also vehemently against giving any vaccinations to any future kids they might have, which he had never mentioned before. Not just COVID, any immunizations at all. I can't say I would be comfortable marrying someone in that situation either. In regards to the Bumble profile, she was out of town for work a couple weeks ago, got into a big fight with him over the phone and made the profile later that night while drinking at the hotel bar out of frustration. She feels guilty about doing it and deleted the app when she got home, but didn't realize that meant the profile would still be up. She says she didn't actually go out with anyone but got a bunch of matches, and it kind of served as verification to her that she still had options. She asked what I would do if I were in her situation, and I gave her the honest response that I'd end it before it was too late and things got out of hand. For the record, I'm not the only one she talked to about this, and she says she got the same advice from family and another close friend. So she's calling off her engagement tomorrow. Hoping my girlfriend and I can help her pick up the pieces. Shame it didn't work out, but knowing the whole story, I think it's for the best. Wow he went so far left he went right lol. Seems like a good decision from her side. Values are very important. I would have a hard time dealing with someone who is overly religious, conservative. The Bumble Act though was a low point. Try to speak to her that in the future this should not be her go-to method of validation outside of a relationship. Good decisions have been made. There were going to be some major clashes if that relationship went to the next level. I've never been able to understand how people can leave one relationship and jump straight into another one sometimes even before the first relationship even ends. Then they wonder why the hell they can't seem to find the right person for them. Take some time alone to allow yourself to heal, people. ITT. People who don't get off of Reddit and think anti-vax is only a right-wing viewpoint. So he is a progressive and she is a libertarian. Yeah their worldview is quite different. It's so wild that the extreme left and the extreme right are so similar with holding these fringe ideals. I don't blame your friend. I'm happy she's getting out now. It's way better to just get it over with and deal with the hurt now than waste years of your life with a guy you know probably won't work. Update. My, 40 male, wife, 37 female, won't stop reminding me that I asked her to abort our daughter, 6 female. Original post. First off I want to thank you all for the advice. Before I give the update I would like to answer a few questions majority had. Have we tried counseling, therapy? Yes. We are both in individual therapies and marriage counseling, as is my daughter with a child therapist. Why would you remain intimate while my wife was getting off of birth control? One of the things our counselor said to try was an active sex life at least twice a week, also because we were both under the impression if she were to get pregnant then we would terminate it. Why haven't you divorced yet? Because I grew up in a split household and the amount of times my parents fought over custody for me and my siblings is not something I would want my daughter to grow up in. I also don't want to only see my daughter half the time. Now to the update. I sat my wife down after dropping my daughter off at my parents and told her if she kept making these comments I would divorce her and asked her to explain why she would tell me those things and also told her how it was making me severely depressed again. Majority of you were right. She broke down and told me she hated being pregnant. She didn't want to be a mother anymore and she hated the fact that she kept our daughter. She said she can't stand to look at me while I'm happy around our daughter because she hates that I became a good parent so quickly because we were supposed to be child free and I am happy as a father. I told her I gave her the option to remain child free and she decided against it so that's on her. She apologized multiple times and said she would still want to try to make the marriage work it's just her own issues that are making her be such a bitch. She also said she wants to be a good mother to our daughter and after I told her that I was afraid our daughter would hate me when she is older she broke down even more and apologized a ton. In the end she said she wouldn't blame me if I wanted a divorce but she would still want to try and make us work, not only for our daughter's sake but for our sake as well. We are currently working with our therapist and going to start doing family therapy, with her actually trying to change. We are sleeping in separate rooms and only focusing on our daughter's happiness at the moment. Once again thank you all and I will update later on if needed. I'm glad you confronted her with those comments only to find out she hated it I'm glad y'all are in therapy and working things out. Why would you remain intimate while my wife was getting off of birth control? One of the things our counselor said to try was an active sex life at least twice a week, 
Also because we were both under the impression if she were to get pregnant then we would terminate it. Just because your therapist suggested something doesn't mean you should abandon common sense. Either use contraception or find other ways to be intimate that don't result in pregnancy. Just because your counselor said to have an active sex life doesn't mean that you can use abortion as birth control. You should have been using protection. I'm glad you two talked it out. Hopefully now you two can figure out how to handle this situation together. Good luck man. I'm glad things are better but did you really think having an abortion if your wife became pregnant was acceptable birth control? It's not. You two are adults and there are other methods available. I don't understand your wife at all. How can she resent you for a choice that she made? This situation is entirely her own doing. It's unfortunate that she regrets it but she's made her choice and she has to accept that, without blaming and lashing out at you. I see she's already in individual counseling which is a relief because she needs it, bad. Dude you didn't want to abort your daughter you wanted to abort a bundle of cells that would become your daughter. You had no way of knowing her at that moment and you would never abort her given what you know now. No need to be guilty for feeling overwhelmed. I'm not sure if anyone has said it yet but it sounds as if your wife may have regret but also a bit of postpartum depression. It would be wise to get it checked out and make sure she isn't just struggling with the afterbirth. I understand you guys were in a tough spot to begin with and made some life-changing decisions. But the present day is the reality and both, either parent need to come together to raise her, whichever way that may be single parents or married couple. You both are struggling so it's not selfish to take time away if you need and both agree to. Best of luck. I, 19 female, am scared of my brother-in-law, 40 male, and it is ruining my family relationships. Throw away. TW, creepy behavior. I've known my brother-in-law since I was two, back when he was my sister's, 38 female, boyfriend, and he has been in the family ever since. All the birthdays, graduations, special occasions, in fact when I was younger I thought he was my blood brother cause that's how close he was. From the minute we met he treated me like his little sister. But I'm scared of him now. I hit puberty really young, and he started saying weird things about my body or he would say I looked prettier or sexier than my sister but the worst thing was the kissing. He started kissing me on the lips and I hated it. I would try to dodge the kisses but he would plant one on me anyway or he would say, those lips are mine, or text me with a sexual emoji or other shit like that. He also wanted me to practice making out on him. It took me literally fighting him to stop the kissing. Other than the kissing, it was other stuff like talking to me about sexual stuff even when I was uncomfortable or touching me over clothes. After I turned 18, he stopped but now it's starting to ruin my relationships with my family. Before I didn't mind hanging out with them even when he was being weird, but I've been away at university for a while now and I guess being away from him made me realize the difference in how I feel. I've suddenly developed a fear of him to the point of nightmares. I don't go to any family events if he's there and if the event is at my parents' house, I'll hide in my bedroom until everyone leaves which has led to some arguments. Does anyone have any advice on how to deal with this? I'm too scared to tell my family cause in a way, he is family and as much as he is not related by blood, I can't confidently say that they'll believe me. Save the texts. Save everything. He can deny kisses, he can't deny physical proof. Tell your parents not your sister. And if he has been doing this since before you were 18 and your parents do not believe you do not hesitate to go to the police. Abusers like this are emboldened by silence. He isn't going to stop and it's only going to get worse the more you put up with. If you're unwilling to do it for you I'm sure you have a niece or little sister or cousin who's at a vulnerable age and in line to be his next victim. This isn't helpful to your overall situation but I want to hear your opinion on this. Is it not super fucking weird that he stopped after you turned 18? Normally people pick up their creepy levels when you're of legal age but it seems to me like he's just a pedophile. The kissing and touching over clothes is child sexual abuse and assault. It is very serious what he did, and the way you feel is 100% justified and correct. This man is a pedophile. If he's done it to you, he'll do it again to other girls as soon as he gets the chance. As others have suggested, save all possible evidence, such as text messages. I can understand the hesitation and fear about telling someone about this try writing a letter first, something fully descriptive where you write down everything that he's done, things he said, etc. You can then decide who reads the letter. I'd suggest your parents and your sister too. I'd also seek out a women's shelter if you ever need protection of any kind. 
they have a lot of resources, connections and can possibly put you in contact with a lawyer if anything were to happen. Print out all the texts you gotten from him. Show your parents then your sister. Hopefully she leaves this creep and your parents back you up. Also, go to therapy. I'm sorry to hear that you were being sexualized by your brother-in-law at a young age. I don't think there's a way you can tell this to your family without ruining your brother-in-law. If you really need to tell someone, tell someone in the family you really trust first and will keep it a secret for you. That person will be a better gauge on how the rest of your family will react than the advice here on Reddit. Frankly, I feel like you need to tell at least one person just in case he's doing the same thing to other younger women in your family, being a creepy uncle or whatever. Also, please see a therapist if you need to. I'm sorry. You were sexually abused. Most sexual abuse is committed by someone the victim knows and trusts. It's usually a family member or a close friend. Please open up to someone you trust. I hope your family provide you with a safe space to be honest. I was abused as a child by a family member. I didn't open up until he died. I understand how scared you must be. I recognize the signs of trauma. My heart breaks for you. There are no shortcuts to healing. I hope you're in a position to seek professional help. It'll help you process the trauma and provide a safe space for you to talk. You need to tell the family. Maybe just a very trusted family member first but in the end your sister needs to be warned. Dot. Because from what you described here there's no reason why he wouldn't do that to other kids in the family too. Younger cousins, maybe even his own kids. Your family members must be warned. If they don't believe you, then it's not your fault. Although I hope you still have his messages as proof, at least you tried. I'm really sorry this happened to you. It's disturbing and surely traumatizing. Maybe your university offers some therapy counseling for free?